Hi, I'm Ray Parler, and you are listening to the DU Football Show. Enjoy it, guys. <laughs> I love Ray. the fact that I also got clinks of glasses in the background mm. and everything else. It is very ambient us. And that Ray Parler is fucking hammer time. Oh, yeah. He does no idea who I am. Yeah, <laughs> Talk to him for 20 minutes. He has no fucking clue who I am. <laughs> uh, you know what? I talked to us for 20 minutes, and I don't know who we are That's either. fair enough. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Ray K.A. the fucking Gooner Graham. Stuff of a lord. Look straight in shorts. Sam Grammy. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show. A completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, once again, my co-host... With the slick back do that apparently now needs hair bands, Samuel Graham. Sammy, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. Happy to be back in uh, in studio here, of course. And um, you know, I'm kind of glad that our preseason was fucked up, and now, which I consider week one last week was our preseason, because <laughs> right, we were both away. And now that we're into the meat and potatoes here. We can get back to ourselves, unlike Manchester fucking United. <laughs> was, we've done 30 seconds a show. We Flip can flopped. fuck it right off. We can had completely... to. Fucking had to. <laughs> yeah. They're absolutely terrible, and it's hysterical, and we'll come on to it soon, but that's my opening joke. I won one. It's already funnier than last week. One, yes. one might think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Winner. Yes. yes Good night, yes, everybody. Yes. See ya. <laughs> Heard Costanza. <Yeah. laughs> I'm out. We're recording at the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital, back in the loving, warm embrace of the DU Public House, my friends. You can check us out on all podcast platforms. Please be sure to rate, subscribe, review, and share with a footballing friend. Uh, see everybody that's been uh, rating it on Spotify. We've got yes. a 4.9 out of 5. That's very cool. What the fuck? Well, somebody probably gave us a 4, so, you know. Email me. <laughs> Uh, Which you could do at doyoufootballshow at gmail.com. You know what? Should you want to chat with us, there's many ways that you can. Mr. Graham, watch Killing it over people. here. Fucking late. Bow, bow, bow. I'm like, yo, somebody <laughs> Sam right now. Yeah, this is great. Go go uh, for it. I'm just going <laughs> to shut the fuck up and drink whiskey. And then at Do You Football Show and all the social medias, of course, uh, check out the Patreon. Check out the Do You Drip Shack. New and improved and updated, mm-hmm. uh, which is awesome. A lot of new merch on there. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. So um, however you can support the show. We really appreciate it. It helps keep the lights on here at the DU Public House. We actually have a really, really cool, um, our, our producer produced something, and she um, w- was going to forget to hit the mute button before I talk to her because she's just sitting there, like, just looking at the computer screen. And I'm about to talk to her, and she won't hit the mute button, unmute herself, which means she's going to do like last week where she just started talking just into talking, the yeah. mute, muted mic. Hi, Mel. Hello, darling. <clears throat> Mel actually commissioned an artist to do I caricatures did. of us. I yes. did. And it's pretty fucking kick-ass if I do say so. I didn't get any feedback. I just said, Sam, uh, can I have some of the coffers <laughs> to do something? And he went, okay. Yeah. Gave me a budget. I spent twice that. Yeah, that's, that's how she rolls. But it's worth it. Yo, it's, it's definitely worth, worth it. it. Patreon.com backslash do you football show to <laughs> fill those coffers back up. <laughs> <laughs> but we've now got we've got multiple shirts. We've got some new shirts. We've got some new shirts that'll be coming in about a month. Uh, you can now get slides, bucket hats. More importantly, and I think the favorite thing we're going to start collecting, do you football show pint glasses? Oh, yeah. definitely going to be some pint glasses. There, I have a order to put in. <laughs> For, yeah, for let me know. Put shit, the order in. Actually, um, sample order, especially the one with the effigy of myself. And if you are listening to the show, I will not be publishing this anywhere except for right here. But for one week only, free shipping. Code word: friendship. Aww, <laughs> friendship. Friendship. Who put her in charge of this? I did. I just, <laughs> just, I, lo- I love. I love the fact that that much like our fantasy league, which we'll talk about on injury time, uh, uh, someone will inevitably go, oh, "Why? Why didn't I get like a discount?" Be like, "Well, because did you listen to the fu- yeah. show? 
because mm-hmm. you listen to the show, guess what? You got a motherfucking discount. You got to put the work in there. There might yeah. be another discount that I posted in our discussion group. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the discounts are combinable or not, but if you want double discounts, well... If you want to try to get a double discount, yep. our Patreon people have a discount as well. Patreon yep. have a discount as well. Yeah. I'm all about the discounts. And that is Drunker United FC on Facebook is our closed Facebook group. Yes. Which has been fire. Absolute fire. Absolute fire. But uh, dominated by uh, our- Manchester our, United memes. Uh, well, I was going to say, <laughs> all the memes are great, but our, our girl Jane. Out oh, yeah, show, Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking just buzzing like a bee, that young lady is. Yes. Fucking happy as hell. Everybody <laughs> tagging her, sending bee emojis. <laughs> yeah. It was brilliant. It was very brilliant. Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So as the red-blooded Americans we are, we've got to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Mr. Graham, we're finally back in studio. It's finally time to start drinking some fucking whiskey yes, again. Yes, it is. Gin binge was fun, as it always is, but uh, it is time to get back to our roots. Uh, this is Westward American Single Malt Whiskey. Comes in at 90 proof uh, from Portland, Oregon. And um, you know what? I don't know why I'm stepping all over your, to- uh, your toes. Over the summer, those that may not be aware, uh, Big Houston got a new job, and it's with this company. So why don't you talk about it, and let's see how their training program works. <laughs> See if you paid attention to your online courses, uh, or 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 the national sales meeting that I was just at as well. Uh, very simply put, it's a the best way to describe it. It is brewed like a beer, it is distilled like a like a Scottish whiskey, and it is aged like a bourbon. So uh, a lot of people, when you start with the ingredients, this is all grain to glass. I um had the opportunity to get to go to the malting house. That is not something. It's like, it's government regulated. It's FDA. Like you're not, it's fucking food. You're not yeah. allowed there. Right. You know, so getting a tour is a big fuck deal. And we we got the opportunity to, to go do that and see how, I mean, literally hold the grain in our hand that is malted to make our, our whiskey. And <clears throat> using a two row uh, barley instead of a four or six row barley, that is very specific for beer. Right. Right. Yeah. A lot of a lot of whiskey companies will just kind of use whatever barley, you know. They can get their hands on uh, yeah. my my old employee, um uh Ragged Branch uses a two row as well. That was very specific because they use such a high barley count. Right. In their bourbon, they wanted to make sure that it was grade A quality. Now <clears throat> what they do is they take this we take this two row barley and then we use a uh common um um gonna mess up the name i want to say it's shink uh shink tink um it's the same yeast strain that is used for sierra nevada pale ale okay i thought so, that was where the wild horses were yeah, in virginia yeah exactly no hey. it's not, chink, not chinkatink or acetic acetic where the ponies are well acetic's um, the maryland side yeah but they do go between the two islands. cheekies i i'm not even gonna i'm gonna i'm already gonna catch shit from my boss for because he told him to eat it today and i've already messed up so we're just <laughs> we're gonna keep going the key point is is just make an exceptionally good beer Right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and Sierra I, Nevada Pale Ale is a fucking classic. I I drank it. I drank the wort. It is a pale ale minus the hops. Like right. It tastes like a good clean beer. And then on the distillation part of it, uh, do low reflux, so not a lot of sweat back into mm-hmm. the still. You kind of if you take really good ingredients, you don't want to go hiding those. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you, you want them the to time, stand out. You make all take all this time to make a really kick ass beer. You don't want to then not highlight right. that that wart that you made so twice distilled low reflux very similar to how it's done in scotland and then instead of aging in used barrels like they do in scotland uh we age in brand new american white oak we use both a two char and a three char two chars not commonly used uh so it still has yeah, I could show you the differences between the two. It's not huge. You can see the difference, but it's not overly, it's still charred, right? It's it's charcoal. But what does charcoal do? It filters things out. Yes. So why do you want to do a two char? Because again, really fucking good ingredients. You don't want to necessarily take away those flavors. You want those flavors to be there. And <clears throat> average weight of about three to five years. Um, okay. So some people will be like, oh, well, you know, scotch is like 12 years. Well, that's because it's aged in, used oak and it's also needs more time to interact with the wood Scotland when it gets below 42 degrees obviously they use metric system but when it gets below 42 degrees you ain't aging anymore right 
Right. Because the pores of the wood have to open up, and that only happens when it's hot, then cold, then hot, then cold, right. then hot, then cold. So, and it doesn't work that way in Scotland, which is why it takes so long. Mm-hmm. Also, on the opposite end of that spectrum, why rum, the yield from sugarcane is a ton more, one. Right. So when you look at an 18-year-old rum, you're also getting – there's – so much of it but their actual barrel yield is le- uh, less because it's so hot down there there's a lot of fucking angel share right exactly right so what uh what do you think of the whiskey put so i, I enjoy it i want to uh get your your take here um what it says on the back and then what we actually taste actually 100 percent malted barley aged to perfection elegant robust and fruity with creamy vanilla and brown sugar notes baking spice lush fruit and sweet malt with a tobacco dark chocolate and leather finish I really enjoy it. I think I prefer their stout finish that we drank. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, which don't worry. We'll excellent. drink that on the show soon enough, too. Yeah. That's definitely going to happen. But um, first, first thing I get was like oats mm-hmm. is the first flavor hits me right in. It was like an oatmeal mm-hmm. almost, um, but a sweet oatmeal. So that sweet malt really stands out to me. Yeah, I get stone um, fruits in this. I get a little bit of like that kind of almost peach pit kind of thing. Yeah, like an apricot almost yeah, yeah, the, yeah, over the middle palate. Um, it's not hot at all, which is excellent. Uh, the flavors mm. really stand out. You don't get a ton of alcohol burn. And then it finishes off, I'd say lean more towards dark fruit, dark chocolate for mm-hmm. me. I don't really get a lot of tobacco and leather. I um, get some leather in there. I get a little bit of uh, richness and creaminess to it myself. Of course, the uh, very cool thing that's... Yeah, maybe a little bit of tobacco. The very cool thing that's just recently come about as well is the TTB is finally setting standards for American, American single, single malt. malt. Yep. Yeah, so there's we know that there's standards for uh, bourbon and rye and wheat, you know, minimum 51% grain, right. distilled less than 160 proof, distilled twice, um, goes in a barrel at 140, um, or can't go at the barrel over 140, New American white oak, blah 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 blah. Yep. Well, that's that standard is finally being set for American single malt. So technically, right now, when it says American single malt, we're letting you know that it's 100 percent barley, but there's no government standard that says it has to be right. You yeah. can do whatever you want, and so the idea there is similar to that of like prohibition, when people could just do like nail whiskey if they wanted to, or right. tobacco spit whiskey if they wanted to. <laughs> like that's why Kentucky wanted standards for yes. bourbon because. The level of quality needs to be able to have a certain standard to it. So. Absolutely, yeah. uh, it, it's a damn good whiskey. And um, what would you normally pay for this retail? Uh, it depends on where you go. I would say between sixty nine ninety nine and seventy nine ninety nine. So right. right, right in that range. There Got you it. go. Hey, well, not not gonna you know blow your socks off financially, but also <laughs> not cheap. No, it's at that nice middle yeah. ground premium level. Yeah. Premium, premium level, whistle pig level. I mean, yep. right, right, right in that, right in that range, and uh, much like whistle pig, uh, savory whiskey, not a sweet like. So, mm-hmm. people that are used to bourbon, this is going to be more of a savory whiskey than bourbon, which is mm-hmm. a little bit sweeter. It's so. delicious. I, I really enjoy it. Excellent. So, what else we got to do, Mister Graham? Make sure you drink responsibly. Let's everybody. do that, and let's get into the fucking show, kids. Yes. All right, Sam. <laughs> Fucker. Yeah. Cheers. There we go. We always do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not 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 Whoa. always. Back no. Back in the Whoa. day, we used to not do it. Back in the day, it used to be Mel took both of our glasses and clicked them together. Well, that's because I was a room. mile away from you. Okay. Well, then you need to settle the fuck down. We had a pair of historic opening day victories, as the pair clubs won at home, big time. Mm-hmm. One barely hung on, and the other one dominated. Brentford four, Manchester United nil. Nottingham Forest won, West Ham nil. No bee's dick needed to measure the difference of this match. I'm sorry, excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) I I believe a bunch of Manchester United supporters were laughing at you last year when you were bottom of the table and going. Oh, yeah. Because they're looking looking at 0-3, right? Oh, yeah, big time. They played Liverpool next week. Well, I mean, but then, of course, Liverpool can't win either. (laughs) You know, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, two winless team, two winless teams facing off in one of the most historic derbies. Yeah, well, whatever. You know? <laughs> right, it just took the sting out of the game completely. I, I think uh, it's uh, worth mentioning right off the jump that I'm very impressed with the new sponsorship with uh, Mountain Dew, Baja Blast, Brush, Mega, 
mega super drink that uh, the uh, Manchester United was supporting. You know what? Go back to the drab wall shirt. Go so back what's, to the drab yeah, wall shirt. So what's, what's interesting is back in the 90s in a game against Southampton, Sir Alex Ferguson thought that potentially their shirts were blending in like with the crowd, like with the background, and they couldn't see each other. Mm-hmm. And they were losing like 2-0 or 3-0 or something like that at halftime. Changed their kit at halftime, came out, and at least drew. Okay. But they had a manager that would spur them on with inspiration, fear, all sorts of things. And they had a will to win and played for the badge on the shirt. This lot don't fucking have that. Well, they they have a Dutchman who probably looked at him and went, You all are no good. You don't play football well. All of you. Oh, you? You're you're pretty, yes. Oh, you used to balloon door, sure. You know what you're not doing this year? Balloon d'Or. Maybe yeah. maybe you should be better. That's probably exactly... <laughs> Just the Dutch frankness. The That's it. Dutchiness in all of its Dutchness. Uh, what worries me about Manchester United also is, you know, like, oh, but well, we get Frankie de Jong. Uh, to be Frankie with you, uh, that's not going to help, okay? <laughs> no. It's not going to help. Uh, well, well, especially- there is a culture at the club at the moment that just is complacent, is entitled, is bratty, is just everything that we hate about celebrity. Right. And and that kind of stuff. They have this chip on their shoulder, but they don't fucking deserve it. Right. And it's all coming to a head now. I, I don't think it's Ten Hag's fault. You know, the surprise is how good preseason was and the long buildup he had in the full summer, and then they come out in these two performances. I mean, it's absolutely it's pitiful. I I don't care who you get. Um, if you're bringing De Jong or whoever, if De Gea gonna De Gea the way De Gea De Gea, um, you ain't winning no games. No, I that mean was that was vintage De Gea. That that was vintage Jens Lehman. <laughs> <laughs> that was some crazy Jens shit. That goal. What are you doing? Well, and then turn around in the second goal, he just goes. Yeah, I get the ball passed back to me. Let me pass the ball with his guy with to the guy on the eighteen with a man right on his back and expect him to do something with it. Yeah. I mean that was that was from a fucking goal kick. Yeah. He had the time to look. He could have just Because remember it that's away. when Harry Maguire for absolutely no reason cleaned out um uh Ivan Tony on the edge of the box. Yeah. For no good reason at yeah. all. Got a yellow. Jensen missed the free kick barely. Yep. And then that was the ensuing goal kick. Christian it was Erickson, it, ridiculous. The look on Christian Eriksen's face right after that goal was priceless. It wasn't a, hey, I'm sorry, I lost the ball. It was, what the fuck were you doing giving me the ball yeah, there? It's like, De Gea's what fault. What the hell were you doing? It's De Gea's fault. Christian Eriksen wasn't ready for it because he shouldn't have been played the ball. Yeah, no, absolutely now, not. The other piece to that is after that goal, chance of, Hey, oh, Christian, what's the score? Hey, oh, Christian, what's the score? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic, Vance. Uh, and then um, you're going down with the Fulham was the other chant because Brentford and Fulham are obviously obviously big rivals. Oh, fucking and brilliant. There was, uh, you know, when things are going bad, they do the zoom in on the manager who looks always angry sitting in a seat in the dugout. Mm-hmm. There was a brilliant picture that was obviously a pitch side camera turned at Ten Hag and he looked and he had this big vein like you do coming down the side of his face there. <laughs> and in the bl- in the back was just a fat bloke with a shirt off like screaming at him <laughs> with his arms out in the air. It was absolutely fantastic. Oh just massive smile on his face. Oh, so good. I, a big fan of the meme. Hey, when does Manchester United kick off? In about another five minutes. Every five minutes, yeah. (laughs) The memes from this have been hysterical. Uh, It's just... And it was 4-0 at halftime. It was 4-0 at 35 minutes. And and the the goals got better. I mean, the third and the fourth especially in Buemos was brilliant. That was brilliant. That was brilliant by Brentford, but how the fuck on two passes is the ball in the back of the net when you're Manchester fucking United playing fucking Brentford, well, you, how did Brentford make one long pass, one quick pass, ball in the back of the net? Like you know, 85 fucking yards of pitch they covered. If I was a like United that. supporter in that stadium, I'd have left at that point because that was just a middle finger from Brentford. Mm-hmm. That was a 1995 Sir Alex Ferguson Manchester United counterattack that just buried you at 35 minutes in the it game. Just, that was a, this is how good you used to be. 
this is what you used to do to teams, and yeah. we just did it to you. Yeah, yeah. It was that. It was it was brilliant. The the pass out. Um, I think from what it was this, one of the center backs to Ivan Tony with his wrong foot, first time ball to Wimbuemo, sent him mm-hmm. away. Yeah, it, it's just it's the simplest of things, but it's devastating. And he had a lot to do. I mean, he had forty yards to run. Yeah, and then a finish to oh, make. Yeah. And by that point, De Gea is just a, a dog with his tail between his legs. I mean, take, he, he, I, it take, was it was fucking brilliant. Take nothing away from. I mean, Brentford what, hurried them and, and all match harassed them and made their life a living hell. And and that play from Brentford was fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. Brentford shouldn't be doing that to Manchester United. No, Brentford should be doing that to us. You know, yeah, but but like, but no, th- I mean, some, yeah. some of the most well coached, well run organizations, which by the way, fucking United is not anymore. No, but th- how how do you allow the things to fall apart that much? It's just it's insanity. Yeah, it's so. It, the Brentford were men playing amongst boys. I mean, they absolutely bullied United. They looked scared. <laughs> They looked scared. They looked like they didn't want to be there. They were hiding. They were cowardly mm-hmm. in that game. Roy Keane, Gary Neville, me, Rob Holmes. <laughs> if we were on that Manchester United team. Red card. Somebody would have broke their leg on the oh, yeah. opposition. Oh, yeah. I would have got a six-game suspension. Roy Keane would have been banned for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. And United would have finished with seven men because Rob and Gary Neville would have been sent off as well right. for something. Probably fighting each other and ha- yelling at the ref. <laughs> have some fucking pride in yourself. I just... Hit somebody. Nothing. I, how many times have I said this to you? When you're getting battered, that line on the score sheet better show six yellow cards. Right, because at least then Have you some just, pride. It like, looks like you're trying. Right. Like, okay, fine. You're beating the shit out of me. Okay, great. You're going to get past me. I just want to yeah. remind you, how's your knee feel now? But they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. I mean, it, 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 honestly, it looked like Brentford was the dad. Eric Ten Hag was the mom. They were at the dinner table. This is an old Dane Cook bit. Mm-hmm. And the da- dad just smacked mom across the face, and your mom was like, it's fine, honey. Just eat your peas. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it was – they were just a scared little kid. Yeah. yeah. Manchester United. It It's brilliant. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. I love it. We, we've, ta- we've talked many a times about, like, the league's better when Manchester United is good, yada, yada, yada. And we've – We've joked it before about dumpster fires. This beats all of it. This is, this is, we keep saying, how much lower can it get? This is as low as it can fucking get. This is the worst start in their history. That was the fastest they have ever been down 4 0 in their history yeah. of a football club. Yeah. The fastest they've ever gone 4 0 down. Yeah. Ever. Now, I do want to commend them on something before we move on to Nottingham Forest. Okay. I have to commend Manchester United for a they number of... exceptionally green and bright. A number of years, Newcastle United was the banter club. Mm-hmm. Alan and Keith, thank you very much. For the last couple of years, Arsenal were the banter club. Mm-hmm. For many years before Newcastle, Tottenham were the banter club. Chelsea mm-hmm. were the banter club. It, it seems in this modern era, we always have to have one. Mm-hmm. Just really appreciate Manchester United stepping up to the plate. They're just like, hey, we got this. That's now. it. It's it's our it's world our, now. Take that torch. <laughs> Twenty three years since Forrest has won a Premier League match. Oh, pff, that's it. Brentford hadn't beat United in eighty nine or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, no, didn't they beat them last season? That was eighty six. No, I think they drew. They drew them. That was right. It was a two two draw. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was they haven't beat Manchester United in like 1938 or some shit. So just <laughs> something no, like 84 years for real. Up, I think is be, the number. Beat them and beat the shit that out of them. That was brilliant. Like Sorry, not to take anything away from Forrest. How th- the city field was bumping. Oh, the, oh my the atmosphere god, was, was amazing. Insane. The football was horrendous. Oh god, yeah. God, yeah, it was. I let let me okay. Yes, there were two balls off the post. In the opening minutes, there was a free kick from Cresswell that hit the top of the net that almost went yeah. in. Then there was then there was a the disallowed goal. disallowed goal because um fullback slash striker um 
uh, <laughs> Michael Adamio decided to clear the lane and ran through between the uh, guard and the tackle and made sure he hit the <laughs> linebacker at the right spot yeah. and knocked his ass. <laughs> that, clear you the know fuck what? Out. In in real time, I was I was looking at it like, oh man, that really shouldn't be a foul. When they showed the replay, what VAR saw mm -hmm. as he's running, he plants his right foot and steps back in front of. The the uh, Nottingham Forest defender. Oh yeah, He's like oh that was a clean block. Oh yeah, Commanders, <laughs> yeah. sign them up. <laughs> yeah. We need it. We need a tailback to come through and yeah. uh, and and clear the way. Exactly. It's it's <laughs> Joe Gibbs counter trade all yeah. over again. We're gonna, Absolutely. <laughs> it's the fucking Hogs. Where's John Riggins? <laughs> Run right behind, right That's behind right. Antonio. Man, he's got it covered. He looked he looked like Jerome Bettis fucking and, out there in the flat blocking. And, it was great. And then he got bitter about it. It was like. Mm -hmm. You're going to go back and look at that and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I fucked oh, it. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah, definitely. I did a number I totally on that fucked one. up there. The other thing <clears throat> I, I want to say about this game, really, is it, I, we already discussed it, really, is it wasn't West Ham's day. But if there, if you could relate a Seinfeld character to a football game, mm -hmm. this game, Nottingham <laughs> Forest performance, was fucking Kramer. Oh, God, yeah. Hapless, crazy, all over the place, fall ass backwards into a shitload of cash. Yeah. <laughs> Bust, Jesse bust Lingard and go, oh my God, did I just, Jerry, did I just score? I just scored, Jerry. What the hell happened here? Jesse Lingard misplaced a pass, miskicked the ball, rather, because yeah. I think he was trying to shoot. It hit Awanyi, uh, Awanyi which is how you actually say mm -hmm. it. I learned that this weekend, too. <laughs> right <laughs> on his knee, yeah. And then in the back of the yeah. net. What? How? Yeah, you just. What, what kind of hapless, like, how do you do this? <clears throat> and then you go into the second half, ball off the post, falls right to a head, <laughs> perfect header, great Offside. save by Hendo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, the, and the, the penalty. Where, yeah, the penalty. What a save. <laughs> hey, 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 man, you aren't you glad you loomed out, Dino? <laughs> Here's what it was. Here's what it was. You kept Dino on the bench, and De Gea's like, oh, shit, guess I got to play well this season. Had a really good season last year. Loan his ass out. He's like, oh, well, I can fuck off again because I got yep. a five-year deal. I don't Doesn't have matter anybody. what the yeah. fuck I do. And there's nobody here to displace me. <sighs> Man. And and thank you, Fantasy Gods, for giving Lingard the assist. Yeah, really appreciate that. He's in my fantasy team in both my leagues. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, And then it just it was taking, again, for, for the irons, this is just one it's like, like you guys against Brentford to open the season last year. There was nothing you could do. You were going to First lose game that at home game. against a considerable scout for them at you're, this moment in their you're, history. You're not winning. You're not winning. The soccer gods have looked down and mm -hmm. gone, no, not today. But what West Ham has to look at now is now you're 0-2. And right. you're a team that wants to fight for Europe and Champions League. You... You've you've made some investment. You've added a second striker for crying out loud. Like instead of having just a right back play striker, and you're looking to advance. Who looks Start decent, by the way, Skamaka? <laughs> oh yeah, he has looked good. He looks he looks pretty decent. When he so, settles, I think he might actually be okay. I think I may have been a bit harsh and just generalized Italian strikers. <laughs> I, te which I tend I tend to hard agree with to you. do to be honest. Well, and also normally Italian strikers tend to do very well in Italy. <laughs> Every Wells, no so <laughs> not <good>. so much. <laughs> And, and then one of them does really well every once in a while when they win a World Cup. And that's it. That's it right. <laughs> Never to be seen or heard from again. <laughs> Paulo Rossi from the 80s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just whew, gone in exactly. the distance. Where did he go? Where I don't know. He's gone now. He's, yeah, he's fucked he's up gone. to the Algarve. Yeah. He, he's, he's gone now. <laughs> don't worry about him. Does not exist. <laughs> Nothing to see here, you looky loose. He's down off the Amalfi Coast. He's hanging out <laughs> in his underwear, driving his Maserati. <laughs> Yeah, not a problem. Saying ciao. What, what you worried about? Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> that's uh, that's a uh, joke from Eddie Izzard. Okay. He goes, I just want to be cool and ride around in Italy on a uh, Vespa going, ciao. <laughs> <laughs> the last line of that special, too. It's like, yeah, yeah, and here I am on my Vespa. Ciao. <laughs> Lights and off. Just walks off. That's brilliant. Yeah. I. It just wasn't meant to be, but for West Ham, you need to start getting fucking points. Like, you don't... Yeah, I mean... You, you start in a hole. It, it's unfortunate. City and this, this buzzsaw that you walk into. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> got to start getting Ws. Yeah, but, it, I mean, to be honest, it is early. Yeah. West Ham supporters actually, over the last two seasons, have been fairly reasonable, mm -hmm. considering their history of not being reasonable. Right. And um, if they finish in 10th, I don't think 
there's going to be riots, for instance. I don't think David Moyes would lose his job, for instance. And there are definitely five to seven teams worse than them in the Premier League. They will get wins. I'm not concerned about that. I think these first two games are a bit of an anomaly, and I think they will find their feet and be okay. West Ham have Brighton next. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I feel it, you. I understand it, it just, that. I'm just saying you, they will. You, I, th- I feel like they will find their feet. I think there are, are teams that are in bigger hurt than West Ham are right now. I'm with where you, they sit. I'm with you 100. percent And I only say it because they are where they are currently. It's kind of like you, you like you did last year. They're gonna figure it out. Mm-hmm. But it's worth the note to go. Hmm? I think it's hmm? less harmful for. West Ham to finish outside of Europe than it is for United to finish outside of Europe. And oh, I think God, United, yeah. are, United are in a worse spot than West Ham are right now. Yeah. For instance. So if West Ham finish in 10th, United finish in 9th, in my eyes, West Ham had a better season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you see what I'm saying? Well, and West Ham also can just sell some assets for profit and, you know, oh, we don't have the extra money coming in for Europe. Uh, Declan Rice, 80 million. There we go. Boom. Where our books are even again, right. we can find somebody new and keep and keep things rolling. Right. Nothing but they also here, have it, right back in they the They also haven't brought in many players. I mean, they may not even need the money. The two European campaigns haven't brought in a ton of signings. No. And they got a little bit of money for Yarmolenko, I think. Right. So it, it, what I'm saying is, is that the expectation level of the two clubs it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for West Ham to finish outside of Europe and still be considered a good season. Right. There are a ton of teams worse than them. Where Manchester United in their start, minus five goal differential, right? And uh, uh, a situation where they're bottom of the league after two games, probably going to be bottom of the league after three games. They're in a world of hurt to oh, catch yeah. back up to Absolutely. seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth. Oh, yes. And if they finish outside of Europe could be detrimental to them for the next five years. It could push this project back another five years. What was it? Sixth place finish or a seventh place finish last year for Manchester United? And it, Sixth, wasn't it? And it was, didn't they finish in the spot behind us? And and it was their worst finish in a Premier mm-hmm. League season. Mm-hmm. This team, honestly, like, I mean, you, United could finish, could pull a Chelsea and finish outside the top 10. Now, Chelsea was able to recover just because they're just so disgusting. Well, they rich. were loaded. Right. And then they got sold to someone else who was loaded. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Well, we'll get on to that. He's American. It's fine. We'll get on to that in the next (laughs) segment. It was a showcase weekend for London clubs, man. Uh, We had a London derby, a wild shootout in North London, and Brajan's Crystal fucking Palace. Tottenham 2, Chelsea 2. Arsenal 4, Leicester City 2, Crystal Palace 1, Liverpool 1. Our first battle of heavyweights this yes. season. Second yeah. weekend, battle of heavyweights. And here's one. Can we- you call them heavyweights? <sighs> Conte's very short, kind of stockier. Mm-hmm. Tuchel's really tall, but a beanpole. <laughs> That's true. Are they heavyweights or are they just two giant personalities that have well, hair, and, and their Tot- own respective hair problems? And Tottenham's <laughs> one fuck all. So. <laughs> That one's that one's for you, Mark. That we, one's for you. We want to be part of this Super League. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the it was an it was what we always say about when these big clubs play each other. It was very much chess matchy at first, and you could tell what the game plan was for Conte was. We're gonna sit back and absorb it, and we're gonna counter you, and that's what we're gonna do. And we we were good at it. And yeah, that's how we're with, with Son, with uh, uh, Richarlison coming there, with um, Kulisevsky, mm, the proven. Of course, Kane. and yeah. Right, he's the tip of that spear, obviously. But the, the actual counterattack piece comes from those runners, and no. they're excellent at doing that. The problem was in the first half, and no counterattack. Yeah. It was all one-way traffic. It was all fucking Chelsea. So Chelsea dominated large stretches of the game, as you say. But yeah. Tottenham did what they needed to do in the key moments of well, the of this game. It really, it was the second half. They found they found the opportunities. They grew into the match, and they took advantage of the chances that they had. Mm-hmm. But it was which... it was testy all game. Oh, there was yeah. at least three or four times where players squared up to each other. There was three or four times the manager squared up to each other. <laughs> it was it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Continued on social media later, which I'll come on to at the end. Jesus, there was so much fireworks to go along in this match, man. It was it was fantastic. So so it starts with Spurs level. And Conte well, start with Koulibaly. You can't that goal. Oh, yeah. For a center back 
the technique he used oh, yeah, was, was absolutely fucking brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. Full volley off a corner for a very six foot four, I believe he is. You you want to win back. over? You want to win over your club real quick as a center oh, back? Oh yeah. Put put in a peach of a goal to keep. <laughs> they it, will remember to, that goal forever. To keep his knee over the ball, to keep it down, strike it as true as he did. Raheem Sterling dove out of the way and just barely got out of the way. That's how fast that ball was moving. Oh yeah. For Definitely. a center back, that that could be if you, if they did goal of the season by position easily game over that is the center back goal of the season oh yeah already was really, it was fantastic really good that was so technically gifted it was brilliant I, I couldn't let you skirt over that i'm sorry i mean it's no jags and anfield to uh level in the 95th minute but you know it's, no one remembers okay. what happens when tv was in black and white okay <laughs> well said well said <laughs> but it, it starts with spurs level Mm -hmm. And the first thing Conte does is he turns towards Tuchel's bench and starts double gun D Batista in and ah, really crazy. Uh, that brings in Keith. Keith Kern's watching right now. Uh -huh. Hey, He's, buddy. He said uh, Conte and Tuchel need some composure to handle adversity and they could learn from Ole. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Brilliantly said. Uh, hey, Mel, this is important for you later. It is Tuchel. Not uh, Stanley Tucci. I thought it was a relative. Um, when when you do it live, okay. because uh -huh. you're great live, two goal. Oh, nice tip. Thank you. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. I get wink. jokes. Is this but, a sex joke right now? Yeah, it nice is. Yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah, later on injury time, we're going to talk about our two goals. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to yeah, we'll, we'll cover all our two goals. Yeah, you get a high five for that. Well done. <laughs> That's all right. So, but he does that, which, <laughs> which of course, the, it it's just unwritten rule. Don't gloat at the other box. Not even necessarily the other coach. Just don't gloat at the other box, right? That's just a disrespectful thing. Yeah. Well, Chelsea go two one up. Yeah, <laughs> yes, because it continues. So we all talk about the ver everybody's talking about the very end of the game. There was build up to this. Oh First yeah. First Conte, fucking. <laughs> Double gun fist bumps in front of the fucking bench, which starts a fight between the two of them. Then Chelsea go two one up. They score at the I, I don't know what their the far the home end is at, at the bridge, but uh, that's yeah, the end either. they score in. That is where the bench is next to. The bench is next to that goal. What direction does Tuchel run? The complete opposite direction <laughs> towards the away end. That goes in front of whose bench? Uh, Antonio Conte's bench. Uh, and Weaves in and out on the field. Full sprint. Yeah. Full sprint. Conte was pissed off, head down like so. Didn't see him at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is an important nugget to remember for the end of this conversation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are, so are you saying there needs to be eye contact, Sam? Is that what you're saying? Eye contact? Eye contact is important, Is important, Sam. yeah. All right. Then what? <laughs> then, <laughs> oh, which, which, by the way, at that point, they both already had yellow cards. The cynic in me immediately went online and went, um, where's if, Tuchel's? Well, where's Tuchel's second yellow? Because yeah. if that was Moyes, that would have been a sending off. If well, that was Hassan that would have been a sending off. If that was Lampard or Gerard, that would have been a sending off. Because it was two big six sides playing each other, they let it fucking slide. Now, let me tell you something. Both Tuchel and Conte obliged, <clears throat> and both probably deserved reds multiple times during that game. So they decided to to take <laughs> care of your request at the right end at the of the end, match. they made sure that got taken care of. But, of course, the very end of the match, we have the corner kick that uh, gets reviewed. And what gets missed, Sam? Oh, Kukurea got his hair pulled. Big time. Big time. Oh, big handful. Big handful of hair. I mean, we're talking like, you know, how Brad Williams, the comedian, talks about you got to pull hair right. Put your hand all the way up behind the scalp and grab it. Hold. Don't just grab it in the back. Like, grab it. Yank that shit down. <laughs> like, Well, I, I want to remind Romero, you. Romero, who did that one. I want to remind you. Yeah. Of, I believe it was Van Gaal's first season in charge, and Fellaini may have still been playing at the club. Mm-hmm. But someone, I want to say it's Fellaini because that's the most notable hair I can think of at Manchester United around that time, got his hair pulled. And Van Gaal said something in a press conference along the lines of, and I don't remember the exact quote, but he said something along the lines of, hair pulling in football is not okay, sometimes in the bedroom, depending what you're into, but not okay on the football pitch. How exceptionally Dutch of him. And it was, yeah. We're, what? 
What? <laughs> we don't want to know what the fuck you're into there, LVG. We don't mm-hmm. care. Get out of here. Don't tell us that. <laughs> so no weird. So no no red card, no foul, no nothing. Nothing to see here. You're lucky lose. How VAR misses this, how the ref does not go look at it, and how nothing It should have been a straight how, red, period. How, right? that, I mean that's it should have been a straight red. It was not. Um, Get to retake the corner kick. Wasn't and what even happens? a wasn't even a foul. Yeah, nothing. It wasn't a yellow card. Was yeah. it's just N- nah, nothing. Let's just move on. We now, the corner. We now yep. pull. We now pull Spanish men by their hair. Mm-hmm. This is what we now oh, do. Careful, Catalan. Ca- oh, that's oh, right. He'd get very pissed if I called him a Spaniard. Yes, he would. He's a Catalonian. My, my yes, apologies, Mister Cucarella. La <laughs> Cucaracha. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then what happens? Of course, what happens? Uh, Tano scored. Who scores? Harry King. Old Malprather. Fuck. <laughs> old Ruin hair, my day. Old hair plugs uses the very tip of his <laughs> hair plugs to knock it right in the back of the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did, and that was um, that was unfortunate. Obviously, uh, another small bust up on the bench mm-hmm. uh, at that point. This one <clears throat> relatively minor compared to the other ones. So, Sam, before you get into the end of the match, I'd like to mention a nice thing, a very nice thing. When the okay. whistle blew. Cucarella and Eves Basuma, who were both teammates at Brighton last season, walked up to each other and exchanged jerseys because it was their first time playing each other away from Brighton. Yes. It was very sweet. It like, was you don't, nice. You don't normally see that in main, like big regular season matches where two players exchange jerseys, but those two guys, as former teammates, exchanged jerseys. It was very sweet. Nothing else about what happened the rest of the <laughs> afterwards was sweet at all. Well, so I became aware of this through another podcast we listened to mm-hmm. uh, for a, a couple of pundits on that show. And <clears throat> they, I, I did not know that Graham Souness was on commentary for mm-hmm. this game. And with all the fights about Paul Pogba's hair and yearning for a different time, uh, he's, he's very, he's, he's very Brexit y. Very well, Brexit y. <laughs> it was also very. I think unintentionally misogynistic, Mm -hmm. but misogynistic nonetheless. After England brought it home, well, he is Scottish. Okay. So I don't think it was really at the top of his mind. I really don't think he meant anything by it, Mm -hmm. but he was a ravenous dog at all of the tackles flying in and all the manager bust ups at all the face to face and nose to nose. Oh, he's going crazy for it. Right. And he was known for that as a player. And he, at one point, uh, and I YouTubed it to see this after I heard about it. And it's very true. He goes, ah, we, we've got our game back. This is men getting at it. <laughs> ah, like, like, he's like, like, he's looking for somebody to headbutt. And he has a woman on co-coms with him who just kind of looks at her like, we just won the Euros, you cut. Yep. <laughs> it, was, it was, I don't, again, I don't think he was intentionally misogynistic towards that. I think he was just yearning for, I miss this shit. You know, like, I want to be a part of fighting. Somebody punch me as I name yeah. five fucking cereals. Now, yeah. punch me now as I name five cereals. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was absolutely brilliant. And I'm, sh- he was just foaming at the mouth. When the handshake happens. Oh, my God. The handshake heard round the world. (laughs) Mr. Graham, please describe. All right. So, match is over. (laughs) Uh, Antonio Conte walks quickly, kind of head down like, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I'm not doing anything. Going away. Puts his hand out. Thomas Tuchel goes to shake his hand. Antonio Conte just continues walking. And Tuchel's looking directly at him the whole time. And then he yanks him back. Yanks his ass and back. And the ferocity with which he went from calm, small Italian man to I'm going to rip your motherfucking head off rage <laughs> was instantaneous. I mean, the minute the poll happened, he went from I'm... Ah! <laughs> Hulk smash. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked down. I mean, he didn't even need to. He didn't even need to grow like Hulk no. did. You know, he just was there. And he looks down at the hand. You could see him like, ah! yeah. <laughs> looking at the hands. And that's the meme that Taylor made of us. Taylor, or of me, rather. Of, of the, meme, uh, the meme with. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. And the handshake was Bigby bursting through the door, which yes. is funny. I have seen that situation memed like seven times now everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, with fabulous. various different things. Yeah. And it's each one is hysterical. <laughs> uh, what's funny is the ref immediately gave Conte a red 
but I, nobody so we, saw we've Tuchel seen get this, one. Yeah, we've seen this a few times. At the end of games especially, when something happens after the final whistle, because the television companies are doing their zoom out, play the music, you know, shit, to end the broadcast, and not everything gets seen right away, you know? I think he just did one of these. Yeah. Like yeah. A, a little double tap. <laughs> 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 Fucking zombie land double tap. Off your pop. <laughs> Off your pop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's something on that too, by the way. It's <laughs> oh, from Jesus. last weekend, but I just found out about it. Uh, and, and League One and Accrington Stanley's game, actually, which is quite funny. We'll save that for injury time then. Well, no, it's, it needs to be said on the show. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> it was a very arrogant refereeing situation. So anyway, it, but so that happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The handshake, they're screaming at each other. The, the, the teams come over separating their coaches. The staff comes over separating their coaches. After everybody separated, but that, you know, some of the assistants are yelling at each manager. Some of the players are yelling at each manager, kind of defending their coach doing this that uh, stuff, and uh, Conte just gets the fuck out of there. Just walks mm -hmm. off, got got to go. Bang, right down the tunnel. Um, Tuchel sticks around, goes around, claps the fans, <laughs> does his thing, <laughs> gets out of there. They go do their press conference. Antonio Conte, what do you think? I, I, there's nothing really to talk about. I have nothing to say, right. uh, actually. Just, you know, on when it's, it's when you're on the field, you want in the sporting way to kill your opponent. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I don't know why he keeps talking about murder. <laughs> But he does frequently. He's I prefer talked to about kill. murdering his players before. I prefer to kill him. Yes. <laughs> we all know that that interview. And then uh, Tuchel, though, comes in smiling. Like, no. Like, it was like, hey. yeah, you know, it happens. That's, that is uh, when passion is. And you just, you know, sometimes you do things you don't not very proud of. <laughs> I... Uh, do, uh, you know, you both got red cards. Oh, we we did. Okay. We did. I <laughs> yeah, guess we did. Didn't even have his focus. Uh, Conte, I, I don't think I knew he I got shake, a red. I know when I shake a man's hand, I look him in the eye, and I just expected him to look me in my eye. Yeah, <laughs> like, and yeah. so apparently that was the problem. When you shake hands, you're supposed to look each other in the eye. That was it. This isn't a warm embrace, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, but I think Antonio Conte didn't notice he got a red because all he saw was red. So the card just blended in it with the whole background. The whole background. It's all blood. He's like a bull. This guy. He'll build a. <laughs> I just uh, kind of expected Diego Simeone to come in from the top turnbuckle with a fucking elbow drop. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he... it was just get all of them in there. Let's can we do that? Let's get a Royal Rumble with all the fucking nutso managers. <laughs> <laughs> Ladder match. And then just Mick Foley comes as well just to spark the flames. I'd love that. And then have uh, Ole, the gym teacher, referee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He easily did stop a count. He oh, what? He you're he still alive? He'll Fine. inevitably get knocked out. He'll get knocked out, drug out of the ring, and then suddenly, like, guest referee will run in and hit the one, two, three, winner. Yeah. <laughs> we Clap got, will come in with a fire hose. It's too dry in here. Okay, we, we oh, got we to move on from this, and we got to move. We're going to keep talking about this in Manchester United nonstop, and there's a lot more other shit to talk about. Hell, mostly your fucking club. I know. So uh, quickly, very quickly, uh -huh. continued as soon as Conte got home. So this, the oh, interview, the, the, very professional. Yeah. He took it to the gram. Okay. Went right on Instagram, posted he, a he video of you the personally and said, Hey, this is, <laughs> yeah. this is how I feel about how it. How should I have reacted? I said, You did fucking great. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I would have done. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, um, he posted the video of Tuchel running past him when Chelsea went 2 1 up. Right. And his head very obviously down, arms folded because he was pissed off. And he said, <laughs> I think I think the caption read uh, verbatim. I believe verbatim was "Lucky I didn't see this. Tripping you would have been well deserved." Oh shit! <laughs> Two laugh emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I cannot wait for the return fixture. Oh my god, it's going to be fabulous! Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. Um, <laughs> your boy, the new signing, Gabriel Jesus. Jesus fucking saves with the <laughs> brace. Should have had five. Like legitimately, Sam, oh yeah, man should have scored five goals. Well, the the <laughs> third, the the first hat trick chance was an excellent tackle. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, that was they great... did get a touch on it right as he was swinging. The other two he fucked off. The, the other, other two he, two he fucked had. up. The one left footed one came to him kind of quick, was a little off off balance, but yeah, he should have put it in still. Yeah. Um, and then the uh the final chance yeah that came that to was, the weak post mm -hmm. that he just put off the he side just put netting. off the side netting that yeah. was unfortunate. I, I think that was one of those cases where he was like, 
I can score a home hat trick on my debut. Well, and he and also still managed to get the assist to uh, got two Martinelli. Assists. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think the man did okay. I, I think he has been already embraced by the. 100%. Uh, the Arsenal I think, I, honestly, I think the whole team has been. And nothing shows that more than William Saliba's own goal. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron Ramsdale was coming out. Saliba needed to deal with it. Vardy was coming in. He, he felt he needed to deal with it at least. Cushioned header. Wrong-footed uh, Ramsdale, and ball just sneaks into the corner. You took away all my thunder. I was going to say I'm sorry. Saliba with the perfect header. Wrong net, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I mean but, it was it was. I mean that was lower nineties. That, that was, was excellent. That was per, I mean that was brilliant. Uh, the only way he could have done it better was to kiss it off the post, which he almost <laughs> yeah. did brilliantly. <laughs> but what I loved about it, and and the reason I brought it up, I'm so which was the energy surrounding the game and the atmosphere. That end. Clapped him as soon as it went in. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Keep Trying your head up. Of it. Yeah. It's okay. Ramsdale immediately tap on the back of the head. Uh-huh. It don't don't even matter. Uh huh. Don't even matter. Shaka came back. You know, clapping uh-huh. him. Come on. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll get it back. Means fuck all. They kick off. Two passes. It ends up back at Saliba's feet. The entire stadium erupts in applause. Mm-hmm. Like, I have I've been there. I oh, haven't yeah. felt this level of positivity in that stadium since I started going to Arsenal yeah. games. Oh yeah. And it was it it was that was excellent to see. And that shows when you get somebody in, right? This is what Manchester United need. They need an Arteta that the board allows to do what he wants. <coughs> they need a Conte. They need a Tuchel. Somebody to come in and just disrupt the culture at their club at the moment mm-hmm. and change it from within literally, right? Mm-hmm. It Grow a good cancer, you know what I mean? Be a spot of togetherness and positivity right. and growth and all that kind of stuff and let that spread throughout the club from their epicenter. Right. And it took Arteta a while to do it. It took Tuchel a little bit less time to do it um, after, after Lampard and things started to sour. It took uh, it, it, Conte probably four months, I guess, at Tottenham to, mm-hmm. to, to do that after the, their shit start at the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, not four months, maybe maybe two months because the final three months of the season were excellent for them. Yeah. But um, that's what Manchester United need is something like that. Right. And just uh, that's not really a dig. That's just analysis, mm-hmm. I think. Um, but the, the culmination of Arteta's work over the last season and a half, two seasons, was this game. And it was fucking excellent. So I want to direct a little attention to Leicester real quick, and then I'll come back with my final question for you about this match, and then we'll move on. Um, Leicester, you have to be concerned how many goals you're giving up right now. Yes. Yeah, that's six already in two. Something doesn't seem to be clicking. It feels like the complete game isn't there. Uh, losing your goalkeeper two days before the season starts doesn't help. <laughs> but, but you do have – it's the Welsh national keeper, so it's not like Ward's – you know, a fucking ham sandwich. No, it's, I'm not saying he's bad. He made a couple of actually really good saves. He made right. two glaring mistakes in this game as well. Oh, but, of course. Um, the overall cohesiveness of the team is what I mean. Right. Wesley Fofana hasn't played in eight months. Yeah. He's been off. He's yeah. back. Uh, may mess up the yeah, chemistry of the back line a little off, bit. He was off last week. He's a little off this week. It's Yeah. He's got to get himself bedded back but, in. Um, uh, Ward is his name, right? Danny Ward mm-hmm. is not comfortable with that back line what does he play four league cup games right yeah that's about it you know what i mean yeah so he's not entirely comfortable with that back line and it throws off their whole chemistry they don't trust him he doesn't trust them Fair enough. and that was shown when he came out to clear a ball didn't look like they spoke at all he cleared it off of the back of fafana's leg for a corner yeah on yeah. the edge of the 18 right right fafana look up yeah Danny yeah. Ward, say something. Right. Talk like, to each what other. are you guys doing? And that that moment, I think, epitomized the problems with Lester at the back. Right. Again, same as West Ham. It's going to get fixed. I think they will be fine if they don't finish in Europe. And I don't believe they're in any danger of going down. Yeah. Uh, or even getting agreed. sucked into it, to be honest. Right. Uh, Arsenal, speaking mm-hmm. of chance today mm-hmm. as well. Um, Jamie, hey, Jamie Vardy, your wife's a grass, <laughs> which is pretty good <laughs> because of all the stuff with. Uh, with Colleen Rooney and their right, court right, case and course. everything, which was fantastic, um, and some lighthearted fun. Uh, just it was, it was just a lovely day out at the Emirates, and which I haven't been able to say for 
a long time, really. So last season, there was the really magnificent run where, mm-hmm. where you were looking at the opportunity of being in Champions League, and it fell off at the end. It is what it is. Why does this feel different? Because for the outsider, me watching these first two games feel a lot different than it feels like it all has fucking clicked. Well, that that's it. So last season, uh, during that fantastic run, there were still some very, very nervy <clears throat> moments. We had the stuff with the Bamiyang in the middle of the season, just ripping up his contract. We had mm-hmm. Lacazette not being able to score, but working really hard. Right, The season before, we had a Bamiyang scoring, not necessarily working so hard. <clears throat> in Jesus, the, the signings have been quite astute and are making an immediate impact. Marquinhos hasn't played yet. I don't know much about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fabio Vieira, though, excellent Portuguese playmaker, came with a little bit of an injury. Um, so we haven't seen him feature yet. Uh, I think he will get into the team. I think he'll be a person that will give Odegaard a, a game off here and there. But Art, uh, Martin Odegaard has been playing brilliantly. It looks mm-hmm. like the entire system is clicking. We're on the front foot again. We're playing fun, exciting, attacking football. And we're winning games where we got somebody that'll finish off the chances. Mm-hmm. Not a Bobby Yang who takes 16 touches a game, maybe scores two. Or Lacazette who has 30 shots, <laughs> doesn't score any. Right. But works his tail off. We now have a forward that does both. Right. He's also noticed a big change in Martinelli. Them being teammates on the Brazilian national team. They know each other. They're friends. They're working well together. They're working well together. Saka looks like he's fitting straight in. It's just, it's that's the difference, is we look like we're dangerous every time we get the ball. Yeah. yeah it's... And we're those those great results last season, and it was a good run, and we were all excited and kind of positive. Felt like we were an injury away from crashing. Mm-hmm. Well, now we've got and the way Nketiah finished the season. I trust him to come on for two or three games, score mm-hmm. a couple goals. I trust him to come on in 10 minutes if we need something different. ESR would start for just about any other team in this league. ESR will start, I think, at yeah. some point. Yeah, but you know. when he goes through his, there, we now have depth. Yep, we now can there's make a change. Le- legitimately, there's competition in mm-hmm. every single spot on the field, which and is it good. shows our level has increased. Kieran Tierney can't get in the team because Zinchenko's playing so well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's coming off that knee surgery and everything. Right, but Zinchenko, there. If Kieran Tierney's fully fit, I don't think he starts. No, I don't think he starts either. But when Zinchenko came off, they both shook hands, hugged. They're like, fucking go get him. Yeah. yeah. There's genuine appreciation, respect, and competition for places, and it, it's showing in the level that Arsenal are playing at. Moving on to the last match of the week. Patrick Vieira set up a perfect game plan. Frustrate Liverpool, and it fucking worked. Arsene Wenger did it again. <laughs> worked to a T. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, they f- they hurried and frustrated Liverpool. They soaked up pressure when necessary. They had Eze and Zaha uh, counterattacking frequently. Uh, one of them obviously coming off to a plum. Mm-hmm. What a finish. He had so much to do when he got played through, but great skill from Eze originally to get past, I think it was Fabinho, and then play Zaha through. Um, well, Van news, Dyke's just not fast enough to, to well, get there you know, to cover. Good, well, because, you know, he had to cover for... You know, a right wing and Trent Alexander Arnold, not a yeah. uh, not a uh, not a defender, you know, defender, famously, yeah, um, famously fam- not a defender. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was brilliant. It was a brilliant performance. Uh, Darwin Nunez, <sighs> you get the D back award. I'm watching it right now. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. What, what what I was waiting for, you know, Klopp to kind of make all the excuses because let's face it. You know, Tierney's refing the match, who he's never played the game, Uh so he doesn't know how to do things. And, um, you know, they weren't playing an attractive style. They did the Atletico Madrid thing and put uh, 11 guys behind the ball. And he actually had no excuses. None. He didn't try to blame Joachim Anderson on on the the red. He was just like, he flat out went, yeah, that's a red. You can't do that. He, you, you can't do that. And I was like, Holy shit, Klopp's actually taking accountability for all this well, shit. Well, the 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 hard man in me gets upset with um with Yako <clears throat> Anderson for being soft and going down with that little bitty headbutt. Mm-hmm. The former basketball player in me sh- wants to give him the Reggie Miller award for taking a charge. Yeah. <laughs> the slightest bit of contact. Oh fuck. 
Well, it was brilliant. Before he pushed he him. He sold it perfectly. Before he pushed him, the two of them were tied up, and Nunez did a, like, threw his head back yeah. at him already. So Anderson was ready for it to come. Oh, yeah. So Anderson walked right up behind him Made and pushed himself him. Made big. Knew it was coming, yep. and then felt it. As in soon as he felt the contact. I mean, he felt it. He went straight back. Like he got like shot. He said, like a yeah. Reggie Miller charge. He went straight the fuck back. Look, yeah, I'm watching got, it Mel's now. It He's us. coming at him. <laughs> and then, like, it's like the guy turned around really hard. Here, you can press rewind if you want to see it again. Uh, guy's coming around, turns around really hard. And then the tall white guy, uh, the Spurs player, was no, no it was, uh, it was Palace. Uh, Palace, Palace, sorry. Just like he puts his Poland. hand, like oh, and yep. then falls straight back. <laughs> oh, I swear to God, if there's audio on him, he goes oh, <laughs> and then just goes straight back. But it was I'm great. On, I'm on Liverpool's side on this one. <laughs> well, I mean, no, that's head to head contact is a red. It's yeah, not even it is. debatable, and that's where. You know, give it up to Klopp. He was just like, ah, it's a red card. Well, like, a, f- like, a forward yeah. motion with your yeah. head like that is is it's considered it a headbutt. It does not matter how fair, soft or hard it is. It's it's a headbutt. It's forehead to lower chin. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. But, <laughs> but it's it also still is it still is that is that is not debatable. It's an automatic red. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And he deserves it. it. It was stupid. He lost his head for a minute, and now he's not able to start in the Northwest Derby, which is huge. It's huge. Is it? And it's still huge. I mean, I'd even argue it really isn't a headbutt because the uh, the tall guy grabs his shoulder and it's like a like he puts his chest out. But again, because his forehead is even with the dude's chin, it becomes a headbutt. That is just an issue of height. And I think it's very unfair how is it shortest they're being? I think I think you're mistaken. The headbutt is the actual action. Remember Zizou to Matarazzi uh-huh. in his chest in 2006 to end his career <laughs> yeah. was, still a head, was still a headbutt. When I searched headbutt. headbutt PL, that was the first Even one that came up. Even though it hit him in the sternum. <laughs> now, Zaha's goal was great. Diaz's goal was fucking amazing. Dirty. That was just, dirty. That was one person that just went, we're not losing. We're we, No, we're not losing. I'm scoring at least one. He walked Here. through five Palace defenders or and so. The, the way he kept cutting it back on the foot and keeping he it to beat his outside. two Palace defenders at once, twice. Yeah. <laughs> Faked a shot, took the fifth one out of the game, mm-hmm. and then a bender to the far corner. Fantastic hit. Guaita at full stretch. Had no chance of getting there. That goal was so dirty, you should put it in the washing machine. <laughs> it was fucking fantastic. It was brilliant. Um, missed opportunity for him. He ran away from the cop. Yeah. <laughs> Run in go celebrate him. to the cop. They're the that's the famous one. <coughs> that's the end with the that, rabid foaming at the mouth fans. That's where you want to go jump that up way. In the air. Yeah, where are you going? He ran to midfield, uh, 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 presumably to his family in a box. Did a heart. He and he then just, just started doing a whirly woo with he his assumed hand. Assumed Klopp was going to run out there and hug <laughs> him because that's allowed <laughs> in the center circle. Uh, problem is he's not a goalkeeper. <laughs> Uh, there it is. That's that's what it was. That's definitely what it was. Um, the uh, the bigger issue, though, this is another two points drop. Yes. There's already a four-point gap between them and City. If Liverpool do not beat United, the title is done. It's a two-horse race between City and Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're almost already an hour, Sammy, so we've got to get this done. Easy. Rounding out the rest of the league. And, <laughs> oh, so that happened. Villa 2, Everton 1, Brighton 0, Newcastle 0. It's not that easy because there's a lot of fucking funny shit to talk about here. <laughs> uh, Man City 4, Bournemouth 0, Wolverhampton 0, Fulham 0, Southampton 2, Leeds 2. Um, other than one side got three points, neither side should be particularly happy with that match at all. Well, I say the the at one point we acknowledged that the pattern of grass cut far more interesting than the game well, i was gonna so what i wrote here my notes for this game where i'm gonna let you two go after it because i don't think it was the greatest showing from either side no, no it wasn't no. I said, at all villa probably had the better of the chances but both teams look like they could get themselves into trouble this season unless they figure out how to organize themselves at the back properly and quickly it was the battle of the dads discuss 
<laughs> Battle yeah. of the Dads. <laughs> Battle of the Dads. Uh, what what were you calling uh, Frank Lampard on the sideline? Oh, he's sideline dad. Sideline dad, because he was wearing the T-shirt and With the, the track uh, warm, bottoms. Yeah. yeah. But then when I look at the picture of Gerard and him like next to each other and all the Villa people, like, oh, look at Gerard, dressed so much better. I'm like, no, you got banker dad, and then you have divorcee dad. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I just the other thing actually I forgot this point and I should have put it in the notes is you know maybe they just can't manage in the same league. <laughs> you remember the old midfield they yep. can't play in the yep. same they midfield. They can't play in the same midfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was um yeah that's it. Uh, you have to do a shot. All oh, that's all we have to say. Fortunately, Everton Everton legend uh, Luca Digne went ahead and scored our goal for us. Yes, which was he did great another to, own goal this weekend. Great, yes, great to happen. So here we go, kids. Um, uh. Definitely an unenthusiastic hand job. There was no <laughs> fucking going on at 7.30 in the morning for that match. Yeah. Uh, while he's taking that shot, Mel, I do want to ask you a question. Um, how do you think it disrupts the team with Tyron Mings being stripped of the captaincy and it being given to John McGinn? Uh, or do you think it affects I, the team? I, th- I think it was un- un- unfortunately necessary. Clearly, Gerard really likes himself some guinea, and he doesn't fancy Mings very much. And Mings had a lousy season last year, and perhaps Mings just needs to focus on himself. And Guinea, while not the best player, although he did knock some guy the fuck out. Mm-hmm. What that guy was, was very thinking, Scottish of him. What that guy was thinking, trying to stop a, a Guinea pounder with his forehead. Yeah, not smart. Um, yeah, not in, smart at all, especially with those glutes behind it. In two plays, I'm already excited about Uana, the uh, yeah. the Belgian signing. Mm-hmm. Um, the tall he, tall black dude with he, the dreads he, or uh, twists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He unfortunately, He's awesome. he unfortunately. Um, lost the ball that gave up the goal. But mm-hmm. then I would also say defense, both goals were scored because we lost the ball on our offensive half of the field. You need to be you fucking need to look better at together. Yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be together. Tarkovsky especially. <laughs> on that I think, one. Again, I think his experience, I think mm. this back line is going to come together at some point. He just needs a And be a, a bit time. more solid. It's yeah. just going to need some time. And That's not saying that y'all still aren't in trouble because I have no idea the fuck's going to score your goals yeah, that's until Calvert-Lewin well. comes back. Yeah, um, that's that's my thought as well. But and, a great finish from him, late run from midfield. Oh, uh, yeah. That, and, that created the own goal. That was... That was one guy that just went, okay, well, fuck this. I'm, I'm now taking gonna do, over. Yeah. I'm going to do what I do, which is just go through everybody. He gave you what Jake Pegg was supposed to give you. Yeah. In that 15 seconds. Yeah, I'm I'm already – I know he's very young. I know he's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's only 20 years old, and this is the biggest stage he's played on. He, oh, he played for Lil, but let's face it, like, even, even in Champions League, playing for Lil, it's not that big of a stage. It just isn't, right. you know? So – He's got a lot of eyes on him, and I'm already very excited about what I see. Now, let's move on. Brighton had all the better chances, and uh, they probably should have won that game, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all because Nick Pope won the internet the day before. Yeah, and that was actually the most interesting thing happened surrounding this fixture mm-hmm. at all this weekend, including the 90 minutes where the, they were on the field. So uh, Burger King in England on Twitter put out a poll. What do you like better? Gherkins, so pickles as a topping or mm-hmm. tomato. Newcastle uh, United supporters hijacked came, the poll and said Nick Pope. And yep. Nick Pope won. So next time I go to Burger King, I'm going to order a Whopper with Pope, please. <laughs> And then Pope lent into it, didn't he? Photoshopped a photo of him in the Newcastle kit when he got signed with the Burger King <laughs> on his head. <laughs> prompting Burger King to then say, well, pitch a shutout tomorrow, and I think everybody in Newcastle that's a supporter deserves a free breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> My question to you, Mr. Graham, did our boy go ahead Break out his uh, old kit, Dort Spirek kit. Yeah. Stand at the front of the line to get a sausage Chris sandwich because it's very close to a sausage <laughs> log. You know, I mean that might be right up Ashley's, you know, fucking realm. Did do you think my Mike Ashley was at Burger King today getting a sausage Chris sandwich? No, I think it went to uh, bled into lunchtime because he had to pick Steve Bruce up on the way. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> this is also a perfect segue for me to go back to the Arsenal for a second. And I oh, know Keith just... and Alan are going to appreciate that. Now, our game was actually decent and a fun watch. So our online thing <laughs> didn't get mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Adams was announced as one of the Strictly Come Dancing contestants, which is the British version of Dancing with the Stars. Okay. <laughs> Tony Adams, the former alcoholic. 
<laughs> had a terrible time in Spain managing uh, Arsenal uh, kind of hapless person <laughs> since retirement. But an um, invincible. But in, uh, <laughs> he, um, yeah, he's on the Dancing with the Stars. I can't wait to figure out that. I, I got to ask Lindsay how to illegally watch this. <laughs> Need it's a VPN. Be brilliant. That's what you need, my friend. Uh, the old surf shark. Get get in touch if you'd like to sponsor the show. Very good. But uh not brilliant. I I I want a pope. A I want a wop I want a I want a, I want a poper. <laughs> Just rename the whole fucking thing. Uh um Man City, it took them twenty minutes to score. But within the first five minutes after three corner kicks that just barely went past, I think we understand that walking Burberry ad, Scott Parker had decided, <laughs> we're just surviving. What was About the three stripes? What's that deal? Four stripes. It's, like, yeah. it's, a, it's four stripes. I also heard this. This is a very expensive designer thing. It has to be, has to be some sort of sponsorship deal he's got because it was th- like 38 degrees Celsius at time of kickoff. And mm. He's got a very thick sweatshirt on. And he wore it last week, too. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. If if Burberry made a new scent, it would be called Scott Parker. Now, I think... Or if, jaw, it would be called Jawline, and it I would think smell like Scott I think Parker. The, I think the brand is called Thomas Brown. <laughs> and um, I heard someone say uh, online that the jumper he was wearing with the four stripes, uh-huh. two grand. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, what I want to get scientists on, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, Mel, you know how they say that the earth is heating up <laughs> or whatever? I want to get scientists. I want they to check out why he wasn't sweating. <laughs> that's fucking weird. Who's Scotty Parker? <laughs> yeah. Because he's perfect. He was created <laughs> in a lab. Yeah. You can't, you, I mean. They didn't do- give him sweat glands. <laughs> they gave him glisten glands. <laughs> Sam, why ask if the sun shines? Why? I just didn't know that it does. Just, it, yeah, it just, just be okay does. with it? It's um, fucking weird. Kevin DeBorna, <laughs> potential goal of the season. Oh, that in the wrong side of the the Outside wrong side of the foot, foot swingy. From the, yeah. Oh, that was fucking brilliant. Nasty. Neither team got out of second gear. Kevin DeBorna was driving a fucking McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was excellent. <laughs> just was fucking excellent. The pass to Phil Foden, mm-hmm. fucking excellent. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, just, I mean, the dude's on a different level. Hold on, everybody. Allow me to show you what the best player in the world looks like. Yeah. Allow me to do this now. Very simply. <laughs> well, here's him playing back in the day. No I know. sweat. It was like a mix of me. Yeah. And more me. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Come on, man. You got to hide that jaw behind a beard. He doesn't. He just puts I didn't right back in there. the day. Now I do because I'm fat. But I <laughs> back in the day, I didn't. You know what? He's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never has been. Hence, hence, you are not him. What would you say about Tim Howard? He's chiseled out of stone. Yeah, out of stone. So is he. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, the one thing uh, worth mentioning for Boardmouth, uh, one Mr. Adam Smith. Skirt's getting a yellow card early on where he just literally just takes a guy and throws him to the ground. Oh, right is this a right back? Yeah. And Jesus then, Christ. And then later on does get a yellow card. And then at the end of the game just decides when, because Pep going to Pep, right? Because you know Pep's going to be like, why you do that? Let me explain to you how you should play the game and why you shouldn't, because you know that's what Pep wants to do, mm-hmm. right? Adam Smith was having no part of that. He was like, you could just fuck entirely off Pep and go away. <laughs> oh, so like, he didn't do the Nathan Redmond take it all in? No, no. Just, he was just like, piss off? Piss off, fucking crazy man. <laughs> Guest referee for the Thomas Tuchel uh, <laughs> Smith. And he gets involved in yeah. the match. You know, sometimes the referees will come in yeah. and like th- trip somebody or throw a... Th- but- that's Adam Smith. Adam Smith pulls out the brass knuckles <laughs> from his pants, hands it to Conte. Conte hits him. Sweet, sweet shit music. Knocks him out. One, two, three. Yeah. Match over. Yeah. We're right in the next WrestleMania, And then, baby. And then right Diego the Simeone hits Adam Smith in the back with a chair. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is very simple. Uh, tale of two halves. The entire first half was nothing but wolves. The entire second half was... Uh, Nothing but Fulham. I would like to say the following. Last week, good Mitro. This week, bad, bad Mitro. Mitro. <laughs> we got uh, we got a little bust up with Mitro again mm-hmm. uh, in this one, and then he also missed a pen. Yellow card Fuck. and a pen. 
<sighs> Last week, two goals. He's the darling. Ties against Liverpool. This week, fucks it right off. Yeah. Can easily get away with a one nothing win that you don't deserve. Fucks it right off. Yep. <laughs> of course he did, because why not? It's Mitrovic. Now, you, I, you, it, after the first weekend... I thought we were going to have a, a race of the battering rams in Holland and Metro mm -hmm. with their two goals each. Right. And then Holland gets an assist. He's pissed off. He's angry when um, I think it was Cancelo or Silva, somebody overlapped and didn't give him the ball for a tap in. <clears throat> right. Right. Angry. And this at this point, it was like 2-0. Metro, game's in the balance, going to win it on my shoulders. Jose saw a simple save. <laughs> well, I guess that battering ram racing going to be so hard, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> um, And funny, the last one we're going to talk about was actually a rather entertaining match. Yeah, like it was end-to-end -end stuff. Really entertaining match. I mean, it was like Bowie High School versus Eleanor Roosevelt all over again. End-to-end <laughs> yeah. -end stuff, but the football was shit. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's funny. It was, you know, you, you're looking at the scoreline, it's 2-0 for... For Villa, I mean for Leeds, for Leeds, and you're like, if you're not watching the game, you're like, oh, okay, well Leeds has got this in the bag. No, Southampton should have been up early. They had yeah. opportunities. Yeah, like, they did. In um, the first five six minutes, they were yeah. Meslier made a couple of brilliant saves. Uh, Ben Ben Sunu, the new the new keeper for. Mm -hmm. Made, made a couple of great fucking saves as he well. He looks like he's about twelve. Um, the one really positive for Southampton that you take out of this is that all the kids produced. Yes, the 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 younger kids that you brought in specifically, <sighs> what you're trying to do with your program, all produced. Now the problem is then you're relying on the kids. Yeah, which can be inconsistent. And while he's not giving you a lot, he's still one of your only two strikers. Leads because hold on, newsflash, Sam. I want you to. You're sitting good. Patrick Banford got hurt again. Whatever could you mean? <laughs> And apparently, Leeds were in on Che Adams when they first came up and are very keen for him now. Right. And I could see South be Southampton being dumb enough to fucking sell him to Leeds. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I would in worry... A very Ashley Barnes to fucking Newcastle move. In the same way, but worse, that I worry about Villa and Everton and their defensive frailty, mm -hmm. I would worry about Southampton and theirs. Yeah. Um, because much like... Uh, Villa to a lesser extent, Everton more specifically, where are the goals coming from? There's right. no proven goal scorer in that exactly. side. Uh, so you have to be defensively sound. You have to escape with one nils. You have to escape with one ones to be able to to survive in this league in that position. Yeah. And I would worry that they aren't capable of doing that. Um, <clears throat> Leeds, everyone looks like they can score all the time. <laughs> Defensively, no one looks like they can defend for real. Right. However, they're less helter skelter than they were under Bielsa, and I think with some more time, Jesse Marsh will be able to calm them down a, a bit and be a bit more organized. Yeah. Um, especially when he gets Luke Ayling back after his two footed challenge against. Uh, I think he's due back next week. Yeah. Um, uh, after the he hit, I think it was in Ketia. Yeah, it was. Uh, Ketia. last game. Uh, next to last game of the season. <clears throat> yeah, that's. Leads to a lesser extent, Everton, um, Southampton, these Wolves, and mm -hmm. I, yeah, we're going to have to watch out. Yeah. Going to have I to mean, watch out. It's going to be the most unenthusiastic battle for 12th through 14th ever. Mm -hmm. You know, or 12th through 15th. Well, 12 through, th honestly, think, 12th through 17th. I think they'll be fine because I think there's three worse teams than them. Right. But. They don't look good. No, no, no. And the at all. one that finishes in twelfth will have like nine draws. Yeah, you know not, what I mean. It's not going to be pretty. Nah, it's gonna that that bottom half is going to be ugly. Sure money. <sighs> this is the segment where we tell you what we know and what we're betting on to better inform you for your bets, and it's always responsible and on point and wrong. Yep, and that's what I get for picking Newcastle to do something for me because they took a Twitter poll more fucking seriously than their game. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm down yeah. 100 now. Write something. I will write something as well. Um, hey, Mel, would you mind handing me your pen there real quick? Because uh, I did the thing of assuming that um, Everton would beat Aston Villa 
at the Villa, which they have only done four times since the Premier League has existed. Yeah, if I had control of the board, I would hit the button that says, not good betting. Not good gambling. There you go. It's Thank gambling. You. Keith Terrible says, with money. Yeah, you are. Keith says he lost on Newcastle. Sorry, I'm almost done writing it. I will just... Only... I'm, I'm watching two Villa, gentlemen Villa Fox Fox losing Because we bets. weren't prepared. You ready? Villa Fox. Go ahead. Here you go. Uh, I'll have a medium Whopper Jr. Add bacon, medium fry, medium Dr. Pepper, and some fucking finishing. <laughs> Very good. Put yeah. that into the Dort Spirect cup, cup of, of losers. losers. Right in there. If uh, you don't know where Keith, that comes from. Uh, Keith, Keith, I'm sorry to give you flashbacks, but there you go. All <laughs> the flashbacks. Uh, for, for those that are new to the show, uh, we don't want to give that company owned by that man anything. So we Call dyslexia it, it on Dort's purpose. Uh, also, uh, a old horse racing tradition of ours mm -hmm. to have a cup of losers. You yes. feed the God of losers. To then inspire a win, manifest a win, if you, you will. You need to have the cup of losers. It is the, the cup sacrifice of, so of money. Win. Yeah, it is the sacrifice of money so that other bets may <sighs> rise. <laughs> Good appropriate bets rise and make money. Yeah. Uh, Villa fucks only because Everton can't score. Yeah. And which is weird because didn't you doggy style somebody the first game of the season? Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> then you got fucked. Yeah. Well, what kind of weird orgy hey. is this? Yuri Mina, Mina on the Yuri Mina plan. In one, out four. <laughs> that is yeah. kind of how it works. He's on the, it sounds like he's on the Bamford plan. I yeah. think it's Jane, but um, uh, there's a question. Little Sam, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, no, tell me about it. I don't fucking know. Well, he was thinking odds. <laughs> odds. Odds. Yeah. I'm going to pick my team to win because I know they will, but there's no uh, odds in that, so I need to find something right, exactly. that will get me yeah. odds. <laughs> I, what I figured was Brighton blew their load the first game of the season, and they were going to fuck this one off. And they'd fuck it right off. And yeah. they didn't. So that was that. All right. So I missed with uh, Everton at Villa, so I'm already down $100, but that's okay. Big Sam's Lock of the Week. It's a very rare situation, Sam, but I want to let you know 0% of the time, it works 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's what, what? why I am taking a three-game parlay. <laughs> I was going to say, if you bet City to win, I'm going to kill you. Nine-way parlay. <laughs> Hell yeah, nine-way parlay. Um, I am going to go with a trio of Saturday matches. I'm taking Spurs to beat Wolves, Leicester to beat Southampton. Got to say, 9-0 on the table there because it's at <laughs> Leicester. And Fulham to beat Brentford Ooh. in the West London Derby. Ooh. That's what gave me the odds. Ooh. That would net me. Four hundred and ninety-eight bucks, good man. There you go. You could have found something a little bit more sensible, like I had. Well, and uh, who are we missing? Um, oh, she needs a pen. I kept it from her. Uh, by the way, uh, no, no Pat this week. Pat is also on vacation, and yes. we want to make sure we have uh, Pat's full attention and full gambling prowess, aka lose all my child's, uh, both of my children's uh, college fund yeah. kind of thing. So, well, his his problem last season is he started well middle was mediocre ended horribly oh yeah he just so we wanted to give him a little bit of a head start of a couple of weeks <laughs> <laughs> dig ourselves a hole to give him a shot there we go very it. very well okay. done um anyway for me a little bit more sensible sam brentford over fulham okay they're on a roll okay. on a high after killing united arsenal over bournemouth Okay. Yep. Uh, I think the other thing with Brentford, I think they'll match Fulham's physicality. Got it. Especially that of Mitro. <laughs> uh, Arsenal over Bournemouth, as I said, and Liverpool over United with over two and a half goals in that game. All right. Okay? All very feasible. I may go bet this in person, actually, as well. Uh, 693 on the old fan duel. Very good. Yeah. So Very 100 bucks good. will net me $693. Well, you're already down 100 so you might as well go ahead and get yourself out of that hole. Why right? not? That's hey, guys. Yeah. So much better segment than last week. Hey, thanks. It's much better. I remember to hit the queue and all that fun it's stuff. nice to have internet. Good job. Good it's job. Back in civilization. It's, it's also really good to be able to see my co-host's face, which also helps quite a bit, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Internet in dark patio mode when he's drunk drinking spicy margaritas and hard to see what he says yeah. after i yeah. drank all day yeah yeah a little tough but you know what you know what makes this segment even better the fact that we have a fucking chicken wings wow 
Well, Kitty hit with her opening bat as Man City beat Scotty Burberry Parker's Cherries <laughs> and sits at one and zip. So this week, I gave Kitty Chelsea traveling to Leeds. Kitty was very quick to defend Thomas Tuchel and said he uh, is... Oh, you got it wrong. Tuchel? Tuchel. 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 Remember, you're going to play with the Tuchels. Oh, that's right. We're playing with Tuchels. Oh, can I go? Let's rewind. <laughs> Kitty was very quick to defend Thomas Tuchel and said he is a firm handshaker. And then ran into the coop, pulled out her phone, showed me a selfie of her table side at the infamous Tuchel and Pep dinner tactical season. Ooh. Ooh. Session. Oh. Session. Session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reading, best, really reading is fundamental. Best cold reader in the business. I really am the best cold reader in the, the business. The That's the worst part about this. I'll do it live. Bill O'Reilly over am, here getting it I, fucking done. I am, I am amazing. Uh, so she showed me a shelfie of her table side. A shelfie? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's just falling down that ditch. Wow. So clearly Kitty has tick ties to Tuchel. Uh, Tuchel. Fuck it. <laughs> She's picking Chelsea. Gamble legally and responsibly, everybody. I'm done. Championship corner! I've fallen, and I can't get up! Oh, no! Mel has single-handedly made last week's show better <laughs> in <laughs> one fucking second. I was saying, could you go back and write down that fucking timestamp, please? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's brilliant. Uh, although, right. although, I think uh, two... Uh, 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 what was it? Um... Um, a pair of Tuchels is, I think, what she said in that. That might be the show title. Yeah. <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> That's brilliant. All right. On Friday, uh, Watford beat Burnley 1 0. And I'm sure a very enthusiastic match again. Oh, very enthusiastic. Right. Um, on Saturday, though, we had Fulham. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's Norwich City's turn down. Uh, <laughs> Hull beat Norwich 2-1. Uh, Cardiff over Birmingham, uh, two kind of in and abouts towards the end of the season um, playoff mm -hmm. sides, but that kind of fell off a bit. Uh, Cardiff beat them 1-0, actually, so set them back. Swansea 1-0 over Blackpool. Huddersfield 3-1 over Stoke. Preston 1-0 over Luton. Ooh. Luton not off to a great start uh, this championship season. Millwall beat Coventry 3-2, something they don't normally do is score a ton <laughs> of goals. So that's... Um, all I could hope for is an East London Derby next season. Oh, God. I actually want Millwall to go up. I, I hate I hate Millwall with all of my. So brain. do I. I so want them up for one season. Oh, because, just one season. Because one season we get the East London Derby, which is what we're all all waiting yeah. for. Um, we also need to watch that at the house the night before. We drink a 30-pack of beer, yeah. a bottle of Buckfast, and watch Green Street Hooligans and get into a fight in the backyard. The and then game, wake up hungover and watch the game. The game probably won't be very good. Mm -hmm. Them against each other. The headlines the day after <laughs> will be amazing. And what will be brilliant is... And is not about they, the football. If Millwall comes up, I think Millwall could actually compete with uh, Derby County for the worst record ever. Yeah, oh, yeah. League season. for sure. I Absolutely. think they don't like win any... Not even one. Not even <laughs> yeah. one. Four draws, no, 34 they win losses. One. They beat Everton because Everton always loses <laughs> to teams that get promoted. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rotherham beat Reading 4-0, actually, which is Ooh. Reading off, not off to a great start either. Sunder uh, just came up. Correct. Sunderland 2-2 two -two with QPR. Uh, Wigan and Bristol City 1-1 one -one on that. Sunday, you had Sheffield United and Boro 2-2, two -two, uh, Middlesbrough, that is. Uh, and Blackburn uh, beating the Sausage Rolls, Steve Bruce side 2-1 over West Brom. That leaves your table looking like so. Blackburn on top, three from three from them. Nine points, perfect start. Uh, six, four, one against. They look like they may be the cream of the crop this season. Hull in second place on seven. Watford in third on seven. Uh, Millwall again with their good good start to the season. Six points uh, from, from the opening three games. Cardiff as well, six points. Sunderland, Preston North End, uh, both on five. And um, Rotherham is... Uh, up there in eighth place with four points. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, very good. Uh, Norwich, <laughs> bottom of the table. Ooh, not good. Yep, they are digging themselves a hole. They have one point from their opening three games. Uh, kind of worried for them, to be honest. 
kind yeah. of kind of very worried for them. Yeah, you you do see this where you'll have a team that comes down from the uh, uh -huh. prem and it completely like falls apart. That was but that that's was normally not them. Yeah, normally they're the ones they're who the turn yo -yo right ones. Yeah. win again and come right back up. Yeah. So it's it's not great to see. Not mm -hmm. a great start. The championship's obviously a long old slog. So we'll see what happens. They have a ton of time to turn it around. Mm -hmm. But that is not a very good start from a side that wants to get straight back yeah, to the Premier good, League. Good on Blackburn being top of the table. They only have uh, 3,847 more games to play. Right, yeah. To, to hold on to that Pretty lead. Much. So, Correct. You know, that's how it's going to go. Uh, and West Brom only have 652 more sausage rolls to go uh, after their start of two <laughs> draws, one loss, Three goals, four, four against, minus one goal differential, two points, sit in 20th place. How very Brucey <laughs> of you. All right, that's going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Uh, Sammy, any parting words? The referee in Accrington Stanley's match this weekend was uh -huh. a, a man cut from the spitting image of Mike Dean. Okay. Two yellow cards in quick succession, very quick succession, mm -hmm. uh, against one of the players in that game. I, I can't remember the absolute specifics. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He said... That one's for the shove. That one's for descent. Two yellows is a red. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Only four. This is makes it. This makes it. That's good. Right. This sets it over the top. The first yellow card for the shove gets rescinded for mistaken identity because it was the goalkeeper that did it. He's wearing a different kit. He's got fucking gloves on. <laughs> and you couldn't, and you figure, couldn't it. figure out who the fuck it was. <laughs> and you were that confident in yourself. <clears throat> I almost, when I heard about it, I almost pulled my car over and DM Ben. What the fuck happened with the ref? <laughs> <laughs> he said, this one's for the shove. This one's for descent. That's a red. Off you go. Next time we have Ben on the show, that is definitely a question we are asking about that one. Fucking brilliant. Good. And hey, Sam, great broadcasting out of you to not leak what the score is. Thank you. Because we're going to talk about the score yes. next up on Injury Time. Yep. That where will. we talk about our adopted clubs, Aki Stanley being one of them. One of them. Uh, the Ibs mm -hmm. from Scotland. Well, and the key thing to know about uh, who are uh, who are Ackerton Stanley. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the beers we're drinking and all that other fun stuff as well. And we're going to preview all the matches. And if somebody wanted to find Injury Time, Sam, how do they go about doing that? That is patreon.com backslash DU football show. Uh, it's just one simple $5 tier, and you get both of our extra shows, uh, Injury Time, which Sam's already talked about, and Sound Check, which is our <laughs> actual Sound Check, um, as well as just catching up over the weekend how – we all fared in our various lives, uh, which usually turns back some pretty funny fucking stories. And of course, uh, please go to our link tree to see all of our really kick-ass fucking uh, fun things that we're doing, uh, including the brand new improved Drip Shack, which again, a big... You're welcome. You're welcome. Guess what? Big props to you. Yes. Guess what? You can shop on our merch store from Linktree. Very good. I love and it. And if you don't know what a link tree is, it's dudripshack.com. We motherfucking yep. own that bitch. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we do. I oh. bought him a drip shack. <laughs> bought us a drip shack because, you know, our drip, it's so fly. Also, tell a friend it. about the Patreon. That domain was not cheap. Please no. please don't hate my dripping because <laughs> dripping's what I do. And even better, we have all kinds of pint glasses and stuff. So what I challenge all of our listeners I want Instagram posts. Yes. Tagging the DU football mm -hmm. show with your fucking pint glass, drinking something fun. It could be full of liquor. It could be full of beer. It could be full of wine. I don't fucking care, but I want you day drinking, hashtag day drinking, and I want to fucking see photos of you guys enjoying yourselves with our really kick-ass pint glasses. Yeah, and, sh and share it all in one spot. Let's get a hashtag DU football show and a hashtag DU drip shack. Excellent. So we can find all of those pictures in one collection. I'd like that. Love it. Till next week, everybody. That's a yellow. That's a yellow. Off we go. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. 
Right day, day, the pocket gooner grab. Stump of a lord, but straight and short. Sam Graham, hey. Sam Graham. Hit the fucking new button!